Hey everybody, my name is Nicola Sharrett. I am a professor at Georgia State University and I've been an archaeologist for about 20 years. For most of that time, I have been researching what life was like for people in southern Peru around about a thousand years ago. This was a really turbulent period. Tiwalaka elites have been overthrown and people are trying to forge new societies. So my team and myself have been asking questions like, how is people's daily life affected by political change? How is health impacted by social turmoil? What happens to the organization of communities? Do some people come out wealthier and more powerful in situations like this? How do people build resilient communities when things get difficult? And how are people's identities altered when the world around them changes? But what we're going to do in this video is talk a little bit about what archaeologists do. How do we collect the data to answer questions like that? What methodologies and technologies do we use? I'm going to use some examples from my team to hopefully give you a better sense of what it's like to actually do archaeology. The first thing that I want you to remember is that archaeology is a team effort. My teams in Peru include about 30 people. Students, professional archaeologists, technicians, museum professionals, sometimes volunteers. They're people of various ages and different genders, from different countries who speak different languages, but who all have different skills and talents that contribute to our group effort of learning about the past. The second thing I want you to remember is that archaeologists aren't the only people who care about the past. So we ask permission to do our work. Often that involves getting a permit from a government, such as this one from the Peruvian government. But in addition to getting the okay from authorities, a big part of archaeology today in the 21st century is working with and respecting the interests of communities who might be descended from past descendants of an archaeological site or who might live close by it today. Respecting their interests could mean designing research so that it answers questions that community members have about the site. It might mean not doing research in places that are sacred or important today. It often means following cultural practices during fieldwork. In the picture that you see here, Senora Carmen, who's a ritual specialist in Peru, is performing an offering before we start fieldwork. For Carmen and for many of our team members, this is a really important way of asking permission from the earth before we dig into it. So once we've got the okay, well, what do we do? The first thing is often to find an archaeological site. Frequently, people living in an area will tell us where they are. And often we do something called survey. This means systematically walking across the landscape, looking for evidence of past human activity. So buildings or artifacts, things that indicate an archaeological site. As you can see from Marcelo, who's a Bolivian archaeologist, surveying can be a great way to be outdoors and a great way to see the landscape. But there are other ways to find archaeological sites. This photo was taken from a helicopter. Do you see the rectangular shapes? Those are buildings that are still standing 700 years after they were built. It is very rare to have access to a helicopter. We don't normally have it. And so more and more archaeologists use drones to take overhead pictures. Here's that same site again, but from a picture taken with a drone. Even simpler than flying a drone and something that we can do from the office is using things like Google Earth. This is the same archaeological site just the image is oriented differently. If you look hard, you might see those rectangular buildings. So once we know where sites are, what do we do to learn about them? People often think of digging when they think of archaeology, and we will come back to that. But there's a lot to be learned just from what's on the surface. Before we start digging, we want to create a map of everything that we can see. This is what Jesus, Bobby and Liz are doing. They're systematically documenting the size, the shape and the layout of architecture. And this can tell us an awful lot about the kinds of buildings. Were they houses? Were they palaces? Were they temples? Were they administrative buildings? We also want to study the artifacts that are on the surface of a site. Pottery and stone tools are pretty common because they preserve well. But if we're in a really dry environment, like southern Peru, then even baskets and textiles can survive on the surface of an ancient site. That corn cob that tells us that people were consuming corn a thousand years ago at this archaeological site. So there's loads that we can learn just from what's on the surface. But often there's even more to be learned from what's under the surface. In this picture, John is pulling a ground penetrating radar across a plaza. The radar uses high frequency radio waves and creates an image of the subsurface. It's one way that we can try to identify buildings, sometimes burials, that are underground without disturbing them. But a lot of archaeologists do dig or excavate. Here's Emily, she's a Peruvian archaeologist, and she's leading a group of students from Chicago as they carefully excavate an archaeological house. And we do mean carefully. 
Archaeologists want to record exactly where artifacts are found. For example, if you have cooking pots or food remains and evidence of maybe a hearth or a small fire, you probably found a kitchen. So like Fernando here, we excavate in layers and in small sections so that we can really keep track of where things are. Archaeologists collect everything because everything, animal bones, pottery, even poop, it all contains vital information about people's lives in the past. But we're not done when we've excavated all that stuff. Our students here were washing and drying hundreds, even thousands of pottery fragments that had been excavated. You also see Dr. Lisette. She's a Peruvian archaeologist. and She's in the lab analyzing plant remains under a microscope to learn about the foods that people ate. Dr. Lisette is a really good example of how there are lots of archaeologists who don't spend time surveying the landscape like Marcelo or excavating like Emily. Instead, they have specialist training on a particular kind of material, like plant remains, and they have the knowledge to really glean information that can tell us something about the past. All those materials have to be stored somewhere, and our project is very, very fortunate to work with a museum in Peru and to collaborate with the museum staff there, both to store the artifacts safely and securely, but more importantly, perhaps, to tell the public the stories that those artifacts reveal about the past. So I hope that this short video has given you a little bit of a sense of what it is that archaeologists actually do, of the many different people who contribute to archaeological research, and of all the different ways to participate in learning about the past.